Or should we say, good afternoon, students? Some of you newbies have been watching videos. How many people are, uh, are first timers? earlier today. You're all new to cruising for the most part. Back in the day, they used to make everybody stand at your muster station out along the promenade deck in the hot sun and humidity for 40 minutes. Then you had to jump into the water. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Uh, and you had to like bring your life jacket and nice. actually put it on and it was hot and embarrassing. Uh, now you watch a video in your stateroom, and then you walk up to a person who scans your key card and you're done. But you need to do that by, I think, 3.30, possibly 4. 4. In either event, you need to do that by 4 p.m. If you have not done that, either go do it now or escape early to make sure you get it done before 4, because we can't leave until everybody has been checked off. And if you don't, no gravy drip for you. Yeah. More gravy for Paul and Storm. So this event, it's kind of a Comic-Con, kind of a music and comedy festival. It's a turducken of entertainment <laughs> that floats. <laughs> Just like a real turducken. Yes. That's how you know it's a turducken. If it floats, it's guilty. <laughs> You're a man of science. And if it sinks, it was innocent, but it has gone to heaven and is in a better place. Uh, the schedule, 
generally revolves around, or is built to a degree around, dinner, as we have said, and the main concerts which happen each evening in this very room. A feast of its own sort. <laughs> yes. We'll talk a little bit more about the structure of the main concerts. Uh, but so there's those events happening nightly, and then there are, of course, a whole bunch of official events listed on the schedule. Has everybody visited uh, Joko Cruz? 24.sked.com and seeing the ridiculous number of things happening. So there are official events that we put on ourselves. There's you know, crafting and panels and Q&As and meetups and things like that. And then there is the shadow cruise. That's the stuff y'all do, uh, where we have turned over an increasing amount of the programming space to our attendees who uh, run and organize their own events. And it's super awesome because it means we don't have to do it. <laughs> uh, and those are sort of the main, come on, thing. There we go. So uh, this room fits roughly half the ship. So we have our main concerts in order to make sure everybody gets a chance to see one. We do an early show and a late show, also known as the red team and the gold team. Where's my red team at? And where's my gold team at? Okay, so on most nights, the gold team uh, at, come to the early show, which again, most nights starts at 5 p.m. Uh, the red team, those who want to go eat in the main dining room, will eat at the 5 p.m. dinner seating. And then at 7.30, everybody switches. Math, gotta love it. Uh, today and the last day, instead of 5 p.m., things start a half hour later. Uh, today, mainly because we didn't want anybody to miss sail away, and on the last day, to allow the ship's staff, which goes on shore and does a lot of the services at Half Moon Key, uh, they need time to get back and prepare for dinner. So on those two days, things start at 5.30 and 8 instead. The one other exception to the structure is on day five, which is Wednesday. Instead of main concerts happening, the same one happening twice, there's just going to be a series of one-off performances in this room and in the Rolling Stone Lounge, those being Dan Gilbert at 5.30, Jonathan Colton doing his full band show at 7.30, and Sierra Hull at 9.30. The dinner seatings will remain the same. There's still going to be a 5 and a 7.30 dinner seating. But if you want to come to any of those particular shows and your normal dinner seating would interfere with that, you can make alternate dinner plans accordingly, whether you decide to go eat in the Lido or make reservations at one of the specialty uh, dining options or just go get some pizza on the back deck. Anybody already had pizza? Yes. Yeah. Um, so you can uh, account for that uh, as you need to, just to make sure you don't uh, miss a show that you want to see uh, because of dinner, as important as food is. Uh, all of the main concert events happening in, you know, nightly in this room, are simulcast in, you know what, these slides are old, I forgot to change it. So the Rolling Stone... Well, they, they, they change the venue name every yes, three months. The, the Rolling Stone Lounge, which is on deck two in the middle of the ship, literally every year seems to have a new name. Last year it was B.B. King's Blues Club. It is now the Rolling Stone Lounge. But uh, if you don't want to sit in a crowded theater and want to see something in a little more chill space, it's simulcast there. It is also simulcast on everyone's in-state room TVs. Uh, the main concerts then the next day, and actually all events that ha happen in here, the readings and panels and such, will be made available the next day on demand on the ship rooms TVs as well. And also, um, each of the late show, the red team shows, will be closed captioned and available for viewing the next day on the TV. Yeah. And we apologize for the time that that takes, but it's just because internet isn't always reliable, we can, all, all sort of live, real-time transcription services don't really work, and also they don't work very well for music events, so we have to actually, not manually type it, but we have to... Yeah, we, we tried the, the automated versions, and it was Monathan Dalton, and the lyrics made no sense, so we went this route instead. Yeah, every song, the, the captions just said, ah. <laughs> Which is one of his songs. Yeah. It's, it's great for that one, but then all the other ones, they're wrong. Um, so we actually have to hard, and also the ship's system, like we can't do uh, the, the closed captioning encoded. We actually have to hard print it, on, so to speak, onto the, the file. So there'll be a 
captioned and a non-captioned version of the Red Team show each day. And a, a shout out to the Brothers of the Lens who are doing that captioning. There's actually a team that is doing that. So, thank them for that. Well, while we are busy celebrating our wonderful performances and getting drunk, they are sitting in a room on this ship typing, ah. <laughs> um, and then this generally hasn't pl applied in a while, but just to have it there anyway be to make us seem like a convention. Our default policy is that there is no camping in a space, like if you want to, you know, it's kind of Hall H style if you want to see Rachel Bloom's Q&A in four hours, you sit through three other events. Uh, we reserve the right to clear the space of any, any space uh, in between events. In practical terms, we haven't done that in ever, I don't think, but that is the policy technically. Also, please, no literal camping. Even if yes. you're in the room, do not put a tent up with a Coleman heater. <laughs> don't do it. They're not allowed on a ship. I know it's the only way to craft and turn, say, like, uh, stringy meat into uh, garlicky stringy meat or thyme stringy meat in order to up your dead eye. No other Red Dead Redemption 2 players? Fine. <laughs> Go screw. It's not a big video game crowd. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of new cruisers with us. We want everyone to feel welcome. We know, as we say, it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to, you know, it, it, it's hard to jump into a place where there's all these people, oh, many of whom know each other. Gotta pause, because we have Drew Westfall. Hey! I must go. <laughs> His people need him. We try to uh, foster the ability to, to jump in or slide in to this event's DMs, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> what a tough crowd. Very tough crowd. We have some... Who's ready for pizza? <laughs> right, I forgot to pander to them. Right. Uh, we have some official events, like tonight, uh, the new Cruiser Karaoke event happening in the Rolling Stone later on. Uh, there are a number of different sort of introductory gaming events, uh, as well as shadow events, uh, both, well, it ha ended at three today, but there's another speed meeting event up in the Crow's Nest tomorrow, uh, and other events like that geared to sort of help people get into the, the swing of things. I just definitely recommend tabletop gaming if you have been curious about the games and kind of been intimidated. There are folks up there who are uh, knowledgeable and friendly and find something you're going to love. It's also great if you're new to meet other people. And uh, we have a whole bunch of little table tents. We call it the high die. It's this friendly little 20-sided die saying, join us. If somebody's playing a game or organizing a game that is open for people to come and join, they'll plop one of those on your table. Feel free to jump on in. And same thing for dinner. People will sometimes use them for dinner seatings, since dinner is, it's not assigned tables. It's, you know, if you go to the 5 p.m. dinner seating, you can sit at any of the tables you want to. With, there, there's a couple of people who have fixed tables reserved because they, for dietary issues and things like that, and those will have reserve signs. But otherwise, you don't have to sit at the same table every night. You can move around and meet new people and such. That's an option. And so some people will sometimes put the high die sign to go ahead and join up. We want to be sociable. We want to learn about you. So there's plenty of opportunity to jump in and meet people and, and become a part of the fold. Uh, and also, uh, because the internet is expensive and historically not been very reliable on a cruise ship, because our nerds are the nerds that they are, our attendees developed their own social media platform called TwitR, because pirates, uh, for uh, messaging and posting messages and forum discussions and such. You all received instructions for that. If you care to join, you are welcome to. It is not required. It doesn't, you know, lessen. Like, there's, there's no events that require it, officially speaking, and people can participate as much or as little as they want in that. But it is another way to 
find people who are interested in things, people will use it to do things like organize meetups or games uh, and things like that. So you feel free to utilize that if you want. It is free to use. You do not have to sign up for Wi-Fi access to use it. It just runs over the ship's network. Uh, so that is an option available to you. It's also an option, if, and it's, uh, I've done this a couple times, to ignore the internet completely for the week. Yes, this is a yeah. thing. It sounds mythical, but it is possible. So, some of you are very happy about that, and others I could see were like, you might as well cut off my leg. Uh, if you run into issues, if it is Joko Cruise related, such as, I lost my badge and or lanyard, uh, we have our own info desk set up in the atrium on deck one, middle of the ship. Uh, the hours are posted there. Uh, we'll have people there during those hours who are happy to help you with any Joko Cruise related items. If you have an issue that is, think of it as hotel related, because this is basically just a big hotel floating on its side through the ocean. And hopefully doesn't sink. <laughs> We're like most hotels. Well, it's like it's either like a tall hotel on its side or it's a very wide hotel upright. Depending on your city. Yes. In, in any case, if you have anything hotel related, like relating to your stateroom or charges to your account that you're unsure about or need to fix, that you can go to the ship's uh, the services desk, which is again also in the atrium. The guest services desk is there in the middle of the ship. I believe you can also dial 90. That is what I heard. I haven't tried it. Some people are saying you can dial 90. We're on the street. And also, uh, if you have not met uh, Tara or Cruise Mom Tara, you will, you will eventually. She is the Cruise Mom, uh, and she is also holding office hours uh, at various times throughout the ship. If and she's happy to talk to you about whatever questions you may have. Uh, or uh, you know, maybe people are using a lot of inside jokes that you're not familiar with. She's happy to explain those to you as well. Joko Cruise has a code of conduct. Uh, like any good convention or gathering, you all, when you signed your terms and conditions, you had to read through them. They've been available on our website. They are posted in numerous places here on the ship. We, of course, uh, hope that this is not an issue at all during the week, but all, per all attendees, including all of our performers and crew, are to abide by the code of conduct. And management. Yes, but well, we count as crew. Um, if you uh, have been subject to a violation of the code of conduct, or if you witness a violation of the code of conduct, you have a number of ways to report that. You can contact any helper or staff member, you can fill out a report form anonymously if you wish to just make an anonymous report. They have those at the info desk and a, a, a box to drop those in. Um, we have our main point of contact regarding these things is our ship's listener, Anna Bean. She's not here, but she's been with us for a number of years. She has a phone uh, like the one Drew and like we have that works here on the ship 24 hours. You can always call that number. It's posted, I believe it's 74501. You'd think I would have written it up here, but I'm, yes, I did write it up here. <laughs> Sometimes you're smarter than you are. You would think it, and you would be correct. <laughs> uh, you can call that number at any time. It is, it, she is on call. Uh, and even if it is not a, you know, a direct incident, if you just need to talk to someone uh, or having a, a, a crisis of some sort or issues, or if you're not sure if yeah. it fits, call. But please, you know, we want to make sure everyone has the safest and most comfortable and happiest time as possible while you're here with us. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, you, have, you have these options available to you if you need them. There's a lot of tabletop gaming happening on this ship. As you may be aware of, we have a literal ton of games that we bring with us, in addition to the many games that many of our attendees bring as well. We were, we were two pounds under, and we got like two more Catans, just to put us back over yeah. one ton. <laughs> uh, the game library is located in the main dining room, which is at the back of the ship, the opposite end of, from where we are right now. Uh, the main dining room has two decks. It's on deck two and three of the ship. Up on deck three, the upstairs of the main dining room, if you walk into the entrance and turn left, it, you can look and see it's where all the games are. That's where the game library is. Uh, during all times except during dinner seatings, the main dining room is open for gaming. Uh, there are an, a, a small number of 
places that may be reserved for some gaming events, but otherwise if a table is open, have at it. Go ahead and game there. There are also a number of dedicated 24-7 tables for gaming in the Lido market, which is in the middle of the ship on deck nine, where all that food is as well. Um, they have stick, big round stickers on them indicating they are dedicated for gaming, and so those are also available, especially for those of you playing, you know, one of those games that requires 106 hours to complete. And, or, or, and 100, 100 just to set up. Yes. Uh, so you can also do that there. Uh, and then, basically anywhere there's a flat space, or even a bumpy space, you're welcome to game there. Uh, we absolutely encourage it. Uh, there is also, uh, we have a team that brings on a whole bunch of console games from the earliest retro uh, NESs and Ataris to, I think they got some PS5s up there. Yep. Uh, that is in Billboard on Board, which is the bar that is on deck two, not too far outside of these uh, theater entrances, right across from the casino. Um, and then the ship itself has a space called High Score, which is on midship deck 10. Yep. Uh, it's where, it's near the rooms that they use for the, the kids club, the sort of onboard daycare. It has a couple of very good pinball machines, several multicades, it has ski ball, and a ridiculously long foosball table. Yeah, it's like a so. six person foosball table, it's crazy, and a bunch of other stuff like that. Uh, that is available, that is open, I believe, one to 11 every day to all ages. Uh, so feel free to take advantage of that as well. There is also a lot of crafting taking place on board. Anybody, any crafters out here? The official crafting events are being held in the space that on ship maps is called the Art Studio. In years past on Joko Cruise, we refer to the space as the Holodeck. It is up on deck 11, uh, basically directly above us. Uh, the bar up there is called the Crow's Nest. It's sort of a side room to that bar. Um, and that is dedicated to the various crafting classes that are on the schedule. Those are... Good afternoon, Joko Cruises. So I'm just back with the final reminder about our mandatory safety essentials program. Within the next 30 minutes, we just need the remaining 171 who have not gone to their master station on deck three. You must go visit your master station on deck number three before 4 p.m. today. So everyone must check in at their master station on deck three as part of our mandatory safety essentials program. This does need to be completed before we are allowed to sail out of Fort Lauderdale today. So if you've not yet gone to your master station on deck three, our team members are standing by, ready to guide you. Your attendance is recorded, so do take your statement key card with you, but you are not required to bring your life jacket. So once again, just waiting for the remaining 171 who have not yet visited their master station on deck three. Our team members are standing by, ready to guide you until 4 p.m. today. This will be my final reminder. Thank you so much for your cooperation. And once again, welcome on board. That, that is a seasoned and well-honed shaming voice. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta admire that. <laughs> Nobody does passive aggression quite as well as a cruise ship cruise director. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so, so those crafting classes are there. Seating is limited, so if you are interested in participating in a given crafting class up there, you should get there early because they do tend to fill up. Uh, there are also some general crafting area, area, areas dedicated to general crafting. The Explorer's Lounge, uh, which is at the back of the ship on deck two, there's sort of a theater space and then behind it is just sort of a... Uh, a sitting area that is, is dedicated full-time for people who want to sit and craft there. There are also a number of seats just inside the main dining room on the bottom deck, on deck two. Uh, when you enter and go to the left, you'll see some signs uh, indicating dedicated to crafting. That's during times that aren't um, dinner seatings, but otherwise there's an area over there also dedicated to crafting. So there are lots of table spaces uh, for that as well. For those of you who need a place to get away and maybe not be quite so overstimulated as can happen, we have uh, several quiet areas set up 
on board during the day in the Morimoto My Sea uh, restaurant, which is midship up on deck 10. That's open from, this says 10.30, it's roughly 10. We have a morning meeting in there, which usually is done by 10 with the ship's staff. And as soon as that's done and we've cleared out, uh, it's open there from roughly 10.30 to 3. And then in the evenings from 9.30 onward, we ask that the, the aft sec starboard section of the Lido marketplace, the, the buffet area, uh, be dedicated to sort of more, you know, not game in that area and be more quiet. So yeah, if you want to be in public but chill, that's, yeah. the, that's just fine. So those spaces are available as well. Uh, we have, uh, we redesignate many or most of the ship's uh, restrooms on board to be gender inclusive. Um, thank you. Uh, and those, those restrooms, as, as indicated, they're open to users of any identity or expression. The signing will indicate, indicate the types of facilities inside, whether it has just stalls or has stalls and urinals. Uh, there is a map uh, available for what restrooms are where. You are generally, the, the strategy, and I believe we achieved it, is you are never more than one floor and half of the ship away from whichever type of restroom you seek. Uh, and there's signage on the front of, of every restroom, so um, yay for that, because everybody's got to pee. Thank you! <laughs> you are absolutely welcome. Uh, we talked about the Shadow Cruise. Um, it's this fabulous thing that, that grew naturally just by the enthusiasm of our attendees, so we highly encourage you to seek out at least one uh, and see what it's about because what we find is we have a whole bunch of really interesting people who do really cool things uh, and it's neat to see them express those cool things and show you know, enthusiasm for the same things that they're enthused about. And, and every year we're surprised. So look for, look for something that's like, what is that? That's what you want to go to. Yeah. So feel free to dig through the sked and find something you want to do for that. Um, Many of our performers will hold what we call office hours on board. Some of them are scheduled already, some of them may get scheduled as the week goes on. These are less formal hangouts. They can be as simple as a performer saying, hey, I'm gonna be in the ocean bar from three until four. Let's hang out and grab a drink and chat or whatever. Sometimes they can be a little more structured. Uh, you know, so the famous people are out and about uh, and Keep an eye out if there's someone you know, you're a fan of who's holding one of those events. Absolutely, uh, slide on in and say hi. The internet on the ship. We've talked about it. It is better than it was, which is maybe damning with faint praise because they, they installed um, Starlink satellite uh, in December when the ship went into dry dock. And we sailed last month and it is an amazing improvement over the internet that used to be on the ship, which was, I believe, run by Hamster Wheel. <laughs> hamster but, Wheel and Catapults, yes. Carrier Pigeon. But also, the ship has not, to this point, had a couple thousand enthusiastic tech-savvy nerds, each with six different devices. They've had a big red circle around this week for yes. a long time. This so is what we really know. We, we are the stress test <laughs> for the system. <laughs> Uh, but it is available. Uh, you can purchase it per day or for the week. The, there are two different levels. Uh, the lower level, of course, being labeled premium. <laughs> and then the higher bandwidth level for streaming. Uh, you can all, the plans are also available either for a single device at a time or a plan for up to four devices. Uh, they have instructions for how to sign up for that. We're not going to bother trying to uh, teach you that. There is the aforementioned Twitter, which does not require internet access, that is, but that is also available. And of course, um, the schedule, which is available also with, uh, it's uh, jokocruise2024.sked.com. You do not need internet access to, it's been allow listed on the ship's network, so you can go to that at any time to find the most updated version of the schedule. Oh, and if you have issues with the paid ship internet, that is at the front desk if you need help. Yeah, do not ask Storm or me or Jonathan. I still can't get on it. No. Uh, come on. There we go. Uh, health precautions. We are all together in this big Petri dish for a week. 
Um, we of course also hope that there are no health issues, but it is always best to take precautions. One of the most important things you can do is wash your hands regularly. There are uh, hand washing stations up in the Lido market now, which is a brand new thing. Uh, thorough hand washing is a wonderful way to prevent getting norovirus. I said the N word. Just don't say it three times. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are also hand sanitizer stations placed throughout the ship. It is always good to re up on that. Um, try not to touch your face regularly if you haven't washed your hands in a while. You know, just all the usual advice uh, to um, do if you're feeling sick, to keep yourself from getting sick. Sorry, I read the next bullet point. If you are feeling sick, uh, or, or feeling symptomatic. There, the ship does have a medical office on board. You can get in touch with them. Uh, they have all sorts of solutions from, from simple things. They have you know, ibuprofen and, and various non-prescription meds to uh, more involved processes. Uh, we want to make sure everybody stays as healthy and safe as possible, so we thank you for that. Uh, as a reminder, our masking policy this year, masking is not required, but it is encouraged in uh, public indoor spaces. Uh, there are extra masks available at, or I believe, our info desk and the ship's front desk, uh, if you would like a mask. Uh, our, our general approach, as we say here, please be considerate and use your best judgment, use common sense and common courtesy. If you are in close quarters with someone, they ask if you would mask and you're not wearing one, we would ask you to respect that request. Um, but we all want to get through this thing safely and happily. So uh, that is the masking policy. There is now the 531 rule, which is always good for, uh, for your own uh, welfare. We learned this from our good friend, Will Wheaton. That is, of course, that each day you should try and get a minimum of five hours of sleep Try to eat three meals and take one shower or bath per day. Thank you for your cooperation. But you know, I, we're we're silly about it. But we know, like, there's so much stuff going on, and you want to do it all, and you you sometimes you forget to take time to take care of yourself. I do it myself every year, even though I'm the one that reads this at the beginning of the week. Remember to take some time to take care of yourself and chill a little bit, and it is okay. I usually take three showers on day two, and then it averages out. There we go, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about FOMO. Uh, the old fear of missing out. This year, this math has actually changed since I made this slide, but it is roughly accurate. We have roughly, a, not counting things like dinners, we have 175 hours worth of official events and 180 hours of Shadow Cruise events which of course adds up to 14.5 days of things happening in seven days worth of cruise. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. You can't do it all, and that's okay. As we say, uh, we like to think of it less that you, there's always something cool going on that you are missing, and more that no matter when you want to do something, something cool is going on. And we encourage people to embrace that, and again, are, you are also theoretically on vacation here, too. <laughs> Give yourself a vacation. Allow yourself the chance to do nothing every once in a while. Nap one, in your room, sit by the pool, read the, a book. One of the most like, seriously relaxing things any time of day, but especially evening and night, is just to go off to the back deck and just watch the wake of the boat. And if you've done it, you kind of know. It's very soothing. And if you keep an eye out, you might spot the Kraken that is constantly trailing the ship, trying to catch us. Um, so anyway, do what you can to not give in to the FOMO beast. All of that being said, we have some time until 4 p.m., 20 minutes worth. We are happy to try and answer any and all questions you have. If you have a question fielder or raise your hand, we're going to try this kind of shouty outy style. Uh, if you uh, have a question, go ahead. So, right here first. Go ahead. Uh, the question is, yes, <laughs> March 14th, also known as Pi Day. The question was, has the kitchen been alerted? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> 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 
Everything served in the main dining room will be circular. Everyone enjoy your circle steak. Uh, oh, up here. We're great, how are you? Aw, oh, thanks. So seriously, it hasn't, every year is great, but it hasn't felt like this since like 2019. I don't know what it is, but it just, it's chill. It's really chill. You got, you'll have a real pre-pandemic vibe to you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one right down here. A book library. A book library. The ship actually installed a brand new library that has a kind of small number of books. However, we needed to incorporate that space for staff. Uh, we need some place for our staff to have an office and print things out and do, do work. And we made the difficult decision we had to find some place, and that was the space that we ended up having to use uh, for staff. But if it's for what it's worth, it didn't have a ton of books in <laughs> it. Uh, so there is no physical book library uh, of the ships on board. I don't know if people ever and like do sort of a mini, the, like the thing where you build the. Oh yeah, the uh, the thing but, outside your door. Yeah, yeah, the, the lending library. The, the take a book, leave a book. The, yeah. the, there's talk of one. Well, hey, that'd be a fun thing to organize this week, right? There's a blind book exchange. Oh, sorry. I thought you had a comment about the book library. We'll, we'll come to you next. There is a book exchange on the Shadow Cruise. Check the Shadow Cruise schedule. There we go. Thank you. See, everybody's smarter than us. Ain't that the truth? So, yes. Do we have to sign up for any of the events or is it just first come, first serve? The question is do you need to sign up for any of the events or is it first come? There are uh, a certain number of the game events, uh, whether they're Shadow Cruise or some of the gaming events, I believe have sign up sheets. Uh, you can check, uh, it, 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 in, the, in the, the case they do have a sign up, it should be listed in the description and you can also go to the game library and you can see sign up sheets for those, but as far as any other things like crafting or workshops or things like that, those are strictly first come. Open mic first. also has a sign up sheet. Oh, so yeah, the open mic also has a sign up sheet as well, but most all events are just uh, first come first serve and try and get as many people in as possible. Another question? No, Shadow Cruise, all events including Shadow Cruise are listed on the schedule. I believe the Shadow Cruise events are all in gray. Ah, perfect. Over here. The question is the Tamarind Bar, which is up on 10 midship. That is uh, our uh, private staff and performer lounge, unfortunately that is. That bar itself is not open to the public, but there are, I know there are some drinks uh, that uh, if you are seated in the Tamarind restaurant or Morimoto by Sea, the drinks that are available from that bar are available to you in those restaurants. And the Crow's Nest, which is all the way forward on 11, uh, that has a really nice bar with a fantastic view. Uh, anybody up top? You want up top? Anyone? Over oh, here. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know how to turn your light on, immediately when you walk into your room, there's a little slot on the wall where you can put your room key. Actually, it doesn't have to be a room key. I believe it could be any key, any card with a stripe, I believe, will do it. It doesn't have to be a stripe. Even, even cardboard will work. You don't even need a stripe? I don't even need a stripe. Well, okay, so any, anything card-shaped, I'm told. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you put, put a pop tart in there. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> do not put a pop tart. In there. Do not put a pop tart. Do not put a pop tart in there. Storm told us. <laughs> what is this bill for eight hundred dollars for pop tart removal? <laughs> and that's how Joko Cruise went bankrupt. Uh, one right here. Are you actually a principal? Am I actually a principal? I am not. If, I would, if nominated, I will not run. If elected, I would not serve. Yeah, totally be one of your teachers, though. <laughs> that's that's good, I'm, I'm, I'm a principal. Of, no, I'm not a principal. <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, right, have we been this thorough? More questions? How long is each concert? I, uh, the day that has 
the concerts every two hours, how long is each concert supposed to be? The question is, how long are the concerts on the day when there are a string of concerts? On the string of concerts or the main concerts? The string of concerts. The string of concerts, they are generally roughly the length as listed. So uh, one or two of them are about an hour, one or two of them are maybe closer to 75 minutes. Uh, they won't run any longer than the time that is listed there, and we just sort of, you know, giving a give or take amount of time. Oh, is there a, is the length on the sked? Is what? You're yeah, the, yeah, the length should be listed on the sked. It should be a start, a start, start and end time I for each one. I only had the start times, and I was wondering what the breaks are between them. But if it's oh, gosh, gotcha, yeah. No, if, uh, also, uh, if you look at the schedule, it helps to be on like a desktop or something. But if you look at it in grid mode, yeah. <laughs> that, that makes it very easy to see starts and stops and when Thank things you. overlap and such. Uh, in the middle. The question is, if you, if you alerted the cruise line about dietary restrictions, is there anything else you need to do? I would say the first night to check in with them, um, I think usually the way to handle it is you'll be assigned to a specific table, so there will be a server who will know, have, have been alerted to your needs. So I would say just verify it on the first night. Yeah, it, may, it depends on your dietary needs, whether or not you have chosen to or they would assign you to a specific table. But they have, uh, this year, they have a whole uh, revamped uh, vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free menu that you no longer have to order ahead of time. Yeah, we got applause for Holland America. That was them. They really, really listen. They do. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm not saying we're taking total credit for it, but like the, uh, the enthusiasm and feedback from our attendees over the past several years, I believe certainly fed into the changes they've made to that program. One note about gluten-free items, there are some items that can be made gluten-free or not. So if you're seeing something like that, we think it's clear on the menu, but you might yeah, want it, to It's always good sure. to make sure, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, then you, know, you shouldn't indeed be cautious if you're using Lido, double check. It's always good to check, basically, especially for uh, those who uh, need gluten-free items, to be sure. Uh, they do their best. You know, we, we've been hammering on this, this issue all year, uh, and they do their best with it. But again, because mistakes can happen, hopefully they will not. But it, it is always good to you know, be vigilant about that. Uh, as far as things you should do, you certainly should check in with the maitre d' on night one and check with them if there's anything you'll need to do throughout the week. We don't believe that is the case, but... And in general, if you do have an issue, let them know, because uh, they really do want, they want to know if there's something that they can do better, uh, rather than it just going unaddressed. And that's not just with food, in general. Uh, right there in the middle. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, reminder about airplane mode on cell phones. Once we get out to sea, uh, the ship actually does have a sort of emergency cellular service available called Cellular at Sea, uh, which is very, it's like $16 a minute. So if you accidentally receive or make a roaming call while you're on that, it's an expensive mistake to make. So once we have sailed from any port of call, uh, it is a good idea to remember to turn your phone onto airplane mode. Um, thank you, good reminder. I saw a question over here. Oh, actually, before we get to that, another thing worth noting that I didn't put in the slides. All of our ports of call, including Half Moon Key, for most major carriers, you can have international cell service. If you, most plans usually have an option, like it's $10 a day for calls and unlimited data, or some variation on that. Um, I myself have AT&T, and I can connect in any of the ports of call that we are in this year. Uh, so that is an option as well, and also, in uh, uh, Grand Turk and where the hell is we going? Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> They're all one cruise in my mind anymore. Uh, also, there are numerous places, you know, restaurants and, and other places that may also have Wi-Fi. If you're not paying for Wi-Fi but you want to grab some connection time, those options are usually available to you. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're paid, or you have to be a patron of the restaurant or whatever. But those, if, if you need just a little bit of connection, that may be an option for you as well. The, 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 the question of uh, you change your team late in the game, how do you know which team to sit in I mean, for the concerts and such? Or if, you, if you're in gold and you have a red badge, what do you do? 
to get in. Okay, welcome. Oh, okay. If so, if it turns if it turns out, for example, you are not on the team that you thought you or you were trying to get on, or you want to switch teams, you can talk to our our help desk, the Joko Cruz info desk, and they can get you switched and get you the proper color lanyard. That's uh, Atrium Deck One. Yes. Oh, so the question is if, if they, you've made special reservations for dinner that overlap the time you would normally attend the show, can you go to the other show? This year, there is space that that should not be an issue. We would ask that you wait until basically the show starts and everyone who's seating it normally is uh, has had an opportunity to sit uh, to make sure that there's seating available for people who's, who's uh, you know, the gold team or red team as applicable. But there, it should not be an issue. But provided that. Question. Some more questions. I see people pointing to someone. Ah, all the way top, top center. The time Thank change. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. There is a single time change this week. It is late, late tonight, or if you will, very early tomorrow at 2 a.m. Uh, tonight. Time changes for. What's that? It is on the schedule. 2 a.m. Time changes to 3 a.m. That is the last time you have to bother with it because of the beautiful math of where we are going and whether or not those places, what time zone those places are in, and whether or not they observe daylight saving time. Our, the ship time will always match the port time uh, for the remainder of the week. So that is the only time change is this evening. So that's nice. Anybody else? Right over here. Oh. Are there any dark stargazing spots? That's a very good question. There's no completely dark star stargazing spots. However, we do ask, so there's, a, there's an observation deck that isn't very well labeled at all. It is on the front of the ship on deck 11. Um, and it's, it, it's called the observation deck, even though it's, there's a, a deck on the ship called the observation deck. But it's a separate thing that's at the very front. If you just keep going up, you'll find it. And we ask that the ship turns off the overhead lights up there after, I believe, it's 10 p.m. Yeah, but there are certain navigational lights they have to leave on. But it's, it's pretty good. That is certainly your best bet. And actually, if you go up there and at late at night and it turns out they haven't turned off the light, let us know because that's supposed to be a regular thing. Uh, I know there are often... Uh, shadow stargazing events. I don't know if any are in the shadow schedule this yes. year. Yes. There are. There we go. So there you go. It's called stargazing. Okay. okay. Great. And I see a question center. Oh, how do we know what ship time is? Uh, ask the ship. Like, what time is it? Uh, no, it's uh, your your in room TV will always indi indicate. Uh, what's that? I said 3.54. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, ship time is... A, the yeah, the Navigator app while we have it. Thank you very much. You can always call the front desk, too, because remember the days when you used to have to call a number and get the time? Sure, yeah. At the toe. At the toe. The time, will, the time be. will be. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? We've got a little bit of time left. Over here? Gotcha. So the question is, if your phone is not capable of having the navigator app, what what do you, what do you uh, want to do? I see. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you, honestly, your best bet, I think, is to talk to the guest services desk. They have a tech support team, and they can probably work with you and whatever devices you have to try and get you uh, put on to the system. Also, find a nearby person and ask them for help. Yeah. Also, ask any human being on this ship because you're all <laughs> That's nerds. true. This is about the most friendly and helpful group. <laughs> I always make the joke that if this ship ever sank, that like 
Tech support in the greater United States would be about 47% down permanently. Three quarters of the internet. We could cripple the internet. Uh, we have time for one or two more questions. Anyone at all. And don't if, if you need to get up and leave also, you're not going to hurt our feelings. Feel free. Go muster. muster. And yeah, if you have not gone to your muster station yet, now is the time. I don't see any hands now, so I think uh, I think we've all done it, folks. Yeah. Good job. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful cruise.